Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, it's time to discuss the ANSA's anniversary. Police fire tear gas dispersed protesters at Lekki. This past weekend marked the fourth anniversary of the tragic Lekki Tollgate shooting, where military officers allegedly opened fire on peaceful protesters during the hashtag ANSA's demonstrations against police brutality in 2020. As demonstrators gathered to commemorate the event and demand full implementation of judicial reports on police misconduct, tensions escalated when the Lagos State Police Command used tear gas to disperse the crowd. Several protesters were arrested and, though, the reasons for the detention remain unclear. SP Benjamin Udayan, the command spokesperson, later confirmed that all arrested protesters had been released, with the Lagos State Commissioner of Police um, personally overseeing, process, well, overseeing the process. However, inquiries about the circumstances surrounding these arrests went unanswered. In light of these events, Amnesty International in Nigeria has expressed deep concerns over ongoing human rights abuses by the Nigerian police including unlawful detention, extortion, torture, and sexual violence. The organization's recent statement emphasizes that these violations continue to embolden a culture of impunity, leaving citizens vulnerable to the very abuses that sparked the original hashtag answers protests. Amnesty is urging Nigerian government or the Nigerian government to take immediate action to address this critical human rights violation. And joining us to discuss this is Alfred Oga. He's a social commentator. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. So, um, well, October 2020, um, um, well, October, um, the 20th of October 2020 is known as, you know, the day allegedly that there was um, the answer, the answers movement where there was shooting and, you know, you know, the works of everything that happened 2020. And now four years later, there are still people who are saying that, you know, we would never forget. We would never forget this day. We know this happened um, no matter what the government is saying. And this definitely happened and we have to honor you know our fallen heroes the people who died or the people who, who, who you know put their lives on the line just to ensure that our voices are heard um, and now even yesterday with people trying to protest peacefully at the lucky toll gate we hear that the police was there um, there are several people that um, were arrested as well some of them were even violated sexually um, also but I want you to bring us up to speed with all that happened yesterday thank you very much and uh, thank you for having me you're welcome. You see, uh, October 2020 is a, a, a day that um, people like us can never forget in the history of Nigeria. Yeah. And, uh, and still talking about that, uh, we are still here to get who gave that order. Another order was being issued yesterday again. Mm. Order is coming upon order mm -hmm. continuously. Mm. And I don't know why when... Um, we have we have come to a stage where we can no more mourn the dead in our country. Mm. I don't know when it was signed into law. I don't know when that was agreed by the APC government that we don't have any right to come out and mourn our loved ones. I was there yesterday. Fortunately for me, I was a bit late. And on a point arrival, all the protesters that came out yesterday, some who are heroes who want to stand some persons who lost their friends on that same ground, some family who lost their, their loved ones on that same ground, came out in numbers, in their numbers too. Uh, you know, I mean, remember that same date. And of course, give their take on what happened on that same day, mm. only for the Nigerian police to come out in mass and did all, all the shenanigans they did yesterday. And for some person like us, who was also part of the the protest that took place in 1st of October, I was asking, is this the same CP who was with us in that movement? Remember me, um, and speaking on this same platform, uh, praising the, 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 the CP of mm. Lagos State, that I, he did what I have not seen in my lifetime in this country. He came out in numbers, all the bottle waters we had, beverages we had, the CP of, of Lagos State was the person who, who went ahead and bought all of those waters we used on the protest ground. And I was mm. asking, is it the same P CP again under his watch that the police did what they did yesterday? You need to see how our people were being beaten. 
You need to see how they were being molested sexually. You need to see how they did all they did. The phones were being uh, uh, taken from them. Phones wow. were being broken. Tripods that people came out with to even have a video shoot. All the police, all they could do was that they did all the details. They did, uh, seizing their phones, breaking their phones. A lot of persons suspend several injuries left to be nursed by themselves. Where are we going to in this country? Mm. That's a very good question. And this not have our right again to come out and protest peacefully in our country, in our dearly beloved land. This is totally unacceptable and, of course, it's a condemnable act and we cannot sit and watch the Nigerian police continue in, in, in this form of unprofessionalism that they have been doing in years. We expect them to have, have grown all of these things that they are doing by now. Mm. Okay, um, I mean, it's quite unfortunate to hear all of this because we know what um, the 20th of October 2020 signifies. We know what we're trying to, um, you know, just honor the people that laid their lives that day. And exactly. I mean, in other countries, you see people um, do like candlelight procession. You see people go back to the scene of the crime or of whatever happened. And then, you know, they're putting flowers, they're putting pictures. They're just trying to honor the dead. And I'm sure that's what a lot of these protesters were trying to do yesterday. So it's quite unfortunate to see that the Nigerian police would react this way and according to you even the commissioner of police was you know was abreast with all of this and he allowed it but reflecting on the hashtag NSOS movement because we know that was one of the greatest movement that we've had in a long time especially with our own generation and it's something like you said we would never forget reflecting on that how do you think um, it has made an impact on the Nigerian youth in total and our demand for social justice because even what happened yesterday is also a demand for social justice but how do you think that has impacted so far and the government's response to all of this now now, now the, 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 the the question goes this way mm. was it actually you see when you talk about the fact that um, the security council about answers we will continue it and uh, to talk about it like you see the lucky gate now you can now walk there or those who live within that axis cannot drive in and drive out yes formally before now as you are drive as you are driving in as you are driving out you will definitely have to pay. If you are on your way to work and you forgot your laptop at home, you have, you have to, to drive twice. back and pay. So all of those payments for the now is from that same day till about now. So we will continue to talk about the, the impact of that same one. But then if you talk about the fact that um, um, you talk about sharing of likes of it, so it takes me back to a question. Uh, to ask the local government, these are national issues. Did the, the panel that the they accept that of a truth, it was as that of a truth. They were fallen heroes who went down on that same place. We are talking about the fact that uh, family loved their, lost their loved ones, mm -hmm. that, that, that went out on that same peaceful day to have a peaceful protest, and, 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 and unfortunately came, up back, came back from there. They could not see their loved ones again. Some went and could not return. And people are out to say, look, this day is a day that, that sounds, I mean, that, that, that we can never forget in our history. And we should be able to have what it takes, uh, I mean, to go out there and then, sh I mean, have candle night, I mean, have candle to, to seek for the fact that our loved ones were being pulling on that same day and you are coming out to stop them. The youth, the struggle for the youth still continue. And for some persons like us, we would always stand up to uh, do what is expected of us, uh, what some, uh, according to the 1999 Constitution, we will always stand up and, of course, stand out uh, uh, to speak for the rights of the of, of the citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It is our right, it's our civic right, and we'll continue with the same movement. They cannot, they cannot shut us off like that in our land. They cannot continue to, uh, I mean, and drag us backward. All of these things that we are talking about, is the police brutality, is this still ongoing today? Of The answer is yeah. yes. Today, you can still see in the social media, there are still videos circulating, uh, even in this same year, 2024, that we are. There are a lot of other videos that are still out there. So, if people are saying that, look, these things that we came out to fought for, that we love our loved ones, that we lost our friends, that we lost our, 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 our brothers, and it is still ongoing, and they want to come out to give a remembrance to, to those people that the fallen heroes. Why will you come out and do all, all, 
all you did yesterday to them. Hmm. I mean, so you, I mean, you just even spoke about the fact that police brutality is still something that is ongoing in our nation. And so my question is, do you think there's enough accountability to all of this? Of because, of course, you know, someone gave the order, things went down. Um, today, we're still having the same thing, the same issue that we even protested for in the first place is still reoccurring. Is there some level of accountability with the government? The government will always leave to deny Mm. They will always be to deny, and that's why for some person like us, October first, we came out and we in our numbers, and we are still demanding that look, all of these things are the things that we expect them to, uh, I, I mean, and see all see out to. There are there are there a lot of things are still left untouched, and for we the Nigerian youth, we will still continue to uh, hold them uh, accountable for all of the things, and that's why we keep saying, look, if you are signing in as a CP of a particular state, if you know you, the job is too much for you resign. If you are going in as a governor, the job is too much for you, resign. If you are going in as a House of Representatives, if the job is too much for you, resign. Mm -hmm. Even up to the point of presidency, we will continue to call them out because a lot is left untouched. And that's why we will continue to cry the crime of the, uh, of the average Nigeria in this country. They must continue to see to all of these things that... Hello, Alfred. We are talking about there are things that are plenty, plenty of them that are still left untouched, mm. and we will not continue to watch them free. They will continue. We will continue to call them out in numbers. All right. So I know that um, you know, being given the right to protest, definitely. It's, it's a constitutional right. It's a fundamental human right. You should be able to peacefully protest because it's just airing out your grievances. And we know that the hashtag answers movement, you know, it garnered a lot of attention, even internationally. Everyone was talking about it. So with that being said, why do you think the Nigerian government still tries to use force, so tries to use arms? Because in this case, you know, tear gas was being, you know, released in the air. Protesters were being, you know, arrested, beaten up, violated. A lot of things was being done to them. Why do you think this is always the government's response? Instead of saying, you know what, we hear you. We hear what your grievances are. We're going to try and work on it. Why is the government's approach always the use of force? Hello, Alfred. They are covered that they are hiding. I, yeah, I, I can hear you. Okay, can please you go me? ahead. I can, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Please go ahead. Yes. It's because they have a lot of things they are hiding. Yes. They have a lot of things that they are hiding. And oppressors will continue to run. Oppressors is who they are. And they are afraid of themselves. They are afraid to walk. They are afraid to come out in public for us to see them. Because why? They are afraid. Uh, they, because of the fact that they are not doing what is I think we're having issues with Alfred's um, audio. Alfred, can you hear me? They are afraid of protest. They will not be afraid of public places where we are. Mm. They are not doing what to do. They are not see what we're... So we have issues with Alfred's audio, but if I can hear him clearly, he's saying that, of course, you know, the government is afraid, maybe afraid of what could happen. And of course, with the protests, you don't even know what can, what can happen. And you definitely want to quell it. It's understandable. But I think at this point, it's important that, you know, we all sit down. 
and to say we hear you what can we do better you know for you and I, I i feel like my last question was definitely going to be having to build trust because of course we know that the nigerian youths and the government are not best friends right now and in order to build trust we definitely need to have a sit down and talk and make sure that you hear us not just listen <laughs> you know you hear us everything we're trying to say and i hope that you know the people who lost their lives on october um 20 2020 i hope that you know they will continually rest in peace i hope that um you know all the love and support that the families of those people all the love they need right now will be given unto them and hopefully nigeria will be better so that it's not that they died in vain they would their deaths or whatever they had to pass through would not be in vain hopefully nigeria will be reformed and everything will be better again really really soon all right, that's it for this segment. We'll go on a short break. When we, when we return, we'll be discussing, well, our power grid. Please stay with us. <laughs>